Um, thanks, last Carla, and thanks, uh, ministers, as well. Um, I welcome, like my colleagues have, the, the white paper on ending um, the direct provision and the steps that need to be taken, and particularly the recommendations on taking a human rights-based approach. I'm going to um, mainly focus my comments on the perspective of children and young people in the direct provision system. It's been particularly difficult. Um, they've been very much isolated from their communities and many have been left in a state of limbo in some cases for their entire childhoods. And I always think um, some of the most difficult representations we get is when there's a possibility of somebody moving on to third level education and they've spent a huge portion of their young life in direct provision and then maybe are, are cut out of third level due to the, the financial situation that exists currently with that. Um, there are many young people living in direct provision that have used their voices to raise the serious faults with the system. They are engaged and want to be involved in the conversation. Um, I think it's really important that the government works with young people to build a system that works for them. We need to build a system that make a real effort to reduce waiting times, allowing people to languish in cramped and inappropriate accommodation is unacceptable. The delays in processing families has an enormous impact on children and young people's mental health, and any new reception centres must lessen the anxiety and instability that many children face on their journey to Ireland, particularly when they first arrive. Uh, Sinn Féin are supportive of the proposal to provide the vast majority of asylum seekers with their own door accommodation. This positive move will have a very positive impact on ch children's mental, physical and social needs. I'm very happy to see the impact um, of direct provision on children and young people has been highlighted in that Catherine Day report um, as well. And I broadly welcome the additional funding that will be provided to TUSLA for parenting supports and child development services. While I recognise the inclusion of TUSLA in providing supports for children that have experienced trauma and conflict, it, and it's a positive step and want to be welcomed, I would not like to see TUSLA, which has an enormous remit already and a huge workload being asked to undertake the vital and important intervention work without adequate funding. And just to say on that point as well, I think it's important that people who are dealing with children and young people who are coming from a traumatic um, situation, that they have the, the correct experience and the correct qualifications for dealing with trauma. It's very different um, than other situations. And we just need to always bear that in mind. And as much as possible going forward, we really need to try and have the approach, you know, with that intervention and early intervention and dealing with any anxieties around children and their mental health. The sooner and the earlier you, you intervene with that, we know all the research shows that that is the best outcome for children. And just would like um, the, the ministers to, to be mindful of that. Obviously, you know, I don't think anybody could stand over the current direct provision situation. It's completely unacceptable, and um, particularly for any unaccompanied child. And th this white paper sets out a decision on the protection applications must be made before a child turns 18, and that's to be welcomed, because hopefully as well that will avoid some of the, the situation, as I referenced earlier, in relation to children or young people trying to get into to third level education. Um, I'm also happy to see that children and young people in direct provision will be treated the same as Irish children. The inclusion of a payment similar to the child benefit system will have a positive impact on child poverty in the system. And I suppose I would just have a question in relation to the oversight group, um, who exactly is going to make up the membership and what role will it play? And then ultimately, I suppose, the time frames, you know, I think is it 2025 is when this is expected to kind of start taking place and look, I know nobody believes that anything can happen overnight but we all do certainly know how long the system is currently in place how inadequate it is how it's failing people and particularly children and young people and how we can't continue to have that happen and any moves that can be made to really properly address any of this um, you know, before 2025, I think, would definitely be welcome and would show that there is a very serious commitment there, that it's not some sort of a great plan on paper that we often see in here. Um, and then it's sort of, well, well, we'll deal with that in a few years' time. So I would just urge that any kind of immediate action that can be taken should be taken, particularly for um, children and young people. Thanks, Minister. Thanks.